You know, it was only a couple years ago that Dwight called Daryl the devil and vowed never to speak to him again. Things change. Relationships change. When Daryl held an event to support teens with addiction, Dwight was there to support his friend. Here's a look at our conversation. You and I would have spoken two years ago, or, or you know, and, and we would have, I would have said, listen, you're going to be going to Daryl's event, supporting Daryl. You would have said, you are crazy. <laughs> so since then, you guys are, are not only good, but you guys are, are truly friends. We're, we're good friends, and you know, we had our problems, our differences, yeah. and even like we played together, we had some differences, but it never hit the paper. And I think um, the last time we had our differences, like I said, a couple years ago, we both was wrong by having our differences through the media. By I'll say some things I probably shouldn't have said to the media. I should have approached him about it. And he felt the same way. And I think by going through that, it brought us closer. My former teammates thought I was doing it for a show, you know, because I wanted publicity. This is not about publicity, this is about life and death. And unfortunately, we had to go through that. Both of our families was heard about that. But things got straightened out. We're doing well now. I'm here to support him and what he's doing. The friendship's there, and I think it's real this time. How did that conversation go? Like, who came to who? Did you go to Daryl and you're like, listen, we need to talk, or did Daryl come to you? I think what high school, um, my sister, when my mom got sick, um, she said Daryl came and he prayed over your mom. But I'm still thinking, you know, I thought about saying, you know what, we have a lot of good times. We had more good times than bad times. Why don't I just pick up the phone, give him a call, and just tell him, you know, how I feel man to man. So I called him and we talked, and I was ready for a fight over the phone. But actually, the conversation went real well. I just, you know, I apologize for the things I said. I apologize if I felt bad about it. Then we finally saw each other. I think it was a couple, a couple years ago at opening day. Yeah. We talked, you know, man to man. And it was genuine because I could see we both kind of got a little, you know, teary out a little bit. But it's just that. Really, you guys, you guys, you guys got emotional. Oh, both of you started. You, both of you started crying because there's so much history there. So much history there, and I think it's really a lot of love and care. And I think a lot of times what happens is like. When one of us, like when I have my problems, I think it's more anger on his part because of what happened to me and he's pissed at me. The same thing, like when he had his problems, there's a lot of anger there because we know better and we love each other so much that we get pissed at one another, but we just went about it the wrong way. He felt angry that you two were being self-destructive. Is that sort of what I'm hearing? That's what you hear, yes, because um, once we both went through our different struggles yeah. and you go through rehabs or you get, you know, unfortunately you do prison or what have you, um, you learn and we know better. More so like when he saw me, we had the um, 30th anniversary with the Mets. We talked a little bit then and he said, we need to talk, I don't like the way you look. And I, I didn't like what he said, but I respected that. By the way, <laughs> by the way, two things there, yeah. two things. When someone comes up to you and says, we need to talk, I don't like the way you look. It takes guts on Daryl's side to say that because he knows no one is gonna like hearing that. Exactly, that's what I'm yeah. saying, but for me, I knew where it's coming from. I, 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 I didn't want to hear that. I got pissed, but I had to respect that. Dwight was talking about the fact that you actually went up to him and, and, and you said it to his face. You're like, listen, you don't look okay. You don't look all right. A lot of people will say things behind people's back. You are taking action. You're making sure that people are on the right path. Well, I mean, that's what people do. People talk a lot yeah. and people are two-faced and I'm not. Yeah. You know, if I know you, I love you and I care for you, I'm going to tell you something's wrong with you. Yeah. And I was able to, you know, share that with Doc, you know, because he's my dear friend, you know. At that time, I had got down to 187 pounds, and I wasn't doing well. And I respect him for saying that. And like you say, a true friend will tell you what you need to hear to your face. You won't say bad things behind your back, but to your face. A lot of times people say, well, why didn't anyone say anything? So true, by the way. <laughs> when it's too late, that's what they say. They're always like, why, why should have said something? Yeah, we all have opportunity, yeah. and we all see the need. We all see... Uh, the great cause that you know we, we, we try to do to make a difference, but at the same time, like I said, most people talk a lot, but they're not in action. You say those things, and we had shared similar things before. Even when we played together, we've gotten into it before, but nobody knew. And that's true, by the way. I'm saying the obvious, but it's such a different time now with social media, and everything is out there. When you guys played, I mean, yeah. I read the books, you know, like. I'm glad they didn't have social media back then. Yeah. <laughs> Not about that. Two great men right there who will always be intrinsically linked together. Appreciate them both for being so open.